everybody. This is Jason Levine with the Dice Tower for another Essen Spiel 2015 interview. And I'm here with Vlada Kovato. Um, as I've learned the correct pronunciation, finally, of his name, genius designer here. And you have a lot of things that you put out this year. Um, first is Codename. Let's talk about Codename. This has been one of my favorite games this year. What made you decide to do a party game? Uh, first, I didn't decide to do party games. I don't, I don't just uh, do games in categories and so on. I just, uh, but I, I just do games that I like to play, and I sometimes like to play lighter games and uh, have just fun playing. I don't know uh, time up or something. Yeah. So, uh, and I also like associations, association games. And yeah, so when I was in this mood that I I was uh, thinking when I'm playing games, I'm thinking about them. Yeah, that's, that's my designer job. Yeah, and uh, so when I was in the right mood, and uh, then I came with this idea, tested and it worked. So yeah, this was, would be a shame not to follow it. Yeah, <laughs> of course. I mean, we love the game. It's been out. At Gen Con it sold out, now here you sold out already a German version and only have a little bit left of the other version. And you, in the words, you used a lot of words that could have double meanings like bear, could be a bear, or could be, oh, I have too much of bear. So did you think a lot about the words you wanted to use? Uh, actually, uh, I did, I, of course, my version I did was in Czech. Uh -huh. Yeah, the first version I played tested was in Czech, and uh, in Czech, of course, there are words with multiple meanings. So yeah, I put these words there. Uh, I put uh, words that have like multiple categories in uh, yeah, uh, like uh, you know, platypus can be connected with mammals, but also with eggs and uh, beaks, uh, bill, bills, and bill is uh, <laughs> another has another meaning. It's uh, lots of lots of uh, uh, lots of uh, things, uh, and I. Play tested it with uh, with the, this Czech words. It kind of work work uh, work with almost any set of words, but with some it works better. And then uh, my friend in uh, US, uh, Jason Hall, who does uh, English translation translations of uh, of uh, uh, all our rule books and cards of our, of all our games and. Uh, uh, he and he's writer also, and uh, publishes uh, books, fantasy books. And uh, he uh, he uh, took this this my set of words and uh, made completely different set of words uh, that works better in English with uh, you know uh, with English cultural background and English uh, double meaning words and so on. We then agreed, okay, we need more of these and these. Uh, yeah, but uh, in the end, it works great, and I am happy. Yeah, we're all happy. Do you think you're going to put out expansions or more packs of words in the future? I suppose, but I, I need to say that we, uh, for this ascent, we were so concentrated on uh, to have everything here that we, we were talking about it. There will be definitely something new for the, for the game, uh, but uh, we, it is yet to be... Uh, there's nothing to announce now. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about, I know you've been doing a lot of apps, like the Galaxy Trucker app. Would you eventually like to make an app for code names as well? Uh, yeah, we have app for code names that, uh, that uh, helps to play, uh, that uh, there is, you know, in the game there is timer. And the timer is used very, uh, very uh, free way. Yeah? If you feel you are, uh, they are thinking too long, then you just flip it. It's good for the party, but again, but some, some players uh, like to play it like uh, really uh, like a very thinkful and competitive game, yeah? And for them, we have timer, uh, which presets times and uh, as the app, and also they, uh, there is, because they, uh, there is also generator of this grid, yeah? And some such small touch, so we have app for code names, yeah? Yes, and then I was speaking of Galaxy Trucker app, you have a new expansion for Galaxy Trucker out, Missions. Yeah, yeah. Um, here, 
Should I show them? Yes, of course. <laughs> so yeah, this is mission. This is an icon of the app because, uh, uh, to be honest, I think we would not do this expansion without uh, without uh, doing the app because uh, for the. We said, okay, we need, it was our first digital implementation. We start with the basic game. And uh, then we said, okay, but basic game, some players just played too much of it and uh, there is not like enough in it. That's we, why we did the expansions, yeah, that uh, after some time it, uh, you need some new content. And then we say, okay, so let's try to do a campaign uh, there. Yeah, there's a story campaign or, or career mode, or how to say it, you are flying across the galaxy, you are meeting certain characters and uh, fulfill jobs for them and improve your ship. And, and so that's, and, uh, and uh, we uh, realize it works with the basic game. Yeah, it uh, like makes the basic game fresh again. Yeah, we played a lot uh, during development, of course. And uh, then he said, okay, uh, and then we also say, okay, we need this in multiplayer too. So now it is also in multiplayer. And why to not have it on table? It would be shame. Yeah? So there are these, uh, these missions that are characters from the campaign here um, uh, that uh, uh, gives you various quests. So now this is an expansion that adds story to the game. Yeah, mostly. So it would be more of a storytelling game in addition to racing and, and, and building yeah, and yeah, new new twists, yeah, new way, ways of thinking about yeah. uh, building your ship. And I'm really glad uh, we we did this because we had great time. I had a really great, uh, great time playtesting this on table. Yeah, because uh, it's and of course the big news, one of my favorite games of all time, through the ages, you made the new version of it and you changed a little bit. What kind of changes did you make to the game? No, uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, the, uh, the biggest changes I did was the things that were not the way I imagined them they will work. Because uh, when we were playtesting it, we had, of course, some wide group of Players, but you know, in the, with a group of players, there are always some group thing, and uh, these players were not very military orientated. Yeah, so in the end, the game was a bit too much military focus, more than I would uh, like to. Yeah. Which is uh, original intention. I uh, I, I found uh, found uh, recently my notes from the time was that uh, uh, this game. Uh, it is uh, like a race in the strength, yeah? Like Cold War, yeah? You need to be strong, but you don't want actually use the, uh, use the uh, power, yeah? You just, uh, you are strong to not power to be used against you, yeah? So uh, that was the original intention in the, of the game, yeah? And the wars and aggressions are mostly uh, here as a threat, yeah? Not, uh, and but this was this is okay. Uh, the point is, you uh, if you are uh, if you are uh, building your strength, you just uh, the main purpose of this should be you force other players to build strength too. Yeah, uh, and uh, it kind of worked. But what I didn't like, it still works in the game. Yeah, you uh, you. It is not so easy to win by building your just strength, but it is easy to uh, lose the game because you don't yeah and what 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 i didn't like is the early military that was what we changed the early military and uh, some ex uh, some uh, uh, excesses yes some uh, two strong combos that were as i just unable to uh, to uh, catch up yeah so the early military that was originally in the game was that okay i'm I have plus one strength because I got one extra strength somewhere, yeah. And now I try if I can hurt you because if you if you draw a defense card, then you are safe. If you not, you you will suffer or you need to disband your uh, warriors and so on. So uh, I didn't like this. This was not the original purpose. So that we introduce very simple rule: you can play any military card as defense one. So now it's in it's in the original thing was if you are a bit behind, 
it is not about, uh, good for aggression, but it is good for uh, events because events are usually uh, stronger player. But in it is by one stronger, and then he benefits. So this sh this uh, should uh, cause this cold war because on your uh, next turn you want to be the strong. So it is like this. Uh, if you are uh, more strong, uh, then you can play aggressions down there. And it, sometimes it, it may happen, it's like, okay, uh, he will play aggression anyway, so I will ignore military. And for this case, there are wars that are dependent on the, on the exact amount of uh, difference. So uh, this stays, but uh, it's more uh, with the original intention. Yeah? You, now you do, cannot play aggression if you are just a little stronger. Yeah? That's, uh, that's one change. Another change was the, this a bit randomness in uh, tactics. There was tactic cards that uh, were meant originally to make more interesting uh, this uh, military building. Yeah? Otherwise, you would be just improving your warriors all the time. Yeah. Yeah? Now you have to consider whether it is worth to follow new uh, types of units and so on. But uh, in the end, it, uh, it ended up to have too big uh, luck impact of the game. If someone was able to get a decent tactic, he got advantage just for drawing a card yeah and uh, also there had to be enough tactics so uh, sometimes you ended up to have nothing but tactics <laughs> in your hand that's not good to so uh, we decided that uh, it would be good if players can copy tactics it's also thematic yeah if you play uh, play a tactic you put it in front of you on the table you mark it with your flag marker uh, and uh, it is your tactics and at the start of next round uh, you put it to the middle uh, with your flag on it and uh, anyone can put his own flag on the tactics like for two military actions to copy your tactics yeah so now uh, you uh, of course it is the advantage to have a good tactics because you have it all around you are preparing for it you have the right technologies for it yeah uh, but uh, others are not uh, locked out from these options that's, that's probably main change. There are lots of little changes that make the game game more pleasant, like some cards, action cards that were not very useful, are now more useful. We encourage uh, exchanging leader by extra bonus uh, civil actions for doing this. Yeah, so it is now much more likely you will have uh, four leaders during the games. And so on, and so on, little tweaks. Uh, and we rebalanced many cards to work with this new system. And there should be... There, uh, there was cards that were too powerful and people were grabbing them for three actions. <laughs> yeah, there were cards that, you know... <laughs> the, there, was car, there were cards that were just ignored. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it was a problem when we started playtesting the, play the game. The, uh, the, even the experience player ha had this blindness yeah, for the cars that were ignoring usually, then now they were ignoring them too. Uh, it took some time before they realized they are now much stronger. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, uh, I'm happy how it ended. Yeah, it sounds great. I mean, like I said, it was in my top five of my games of all time. It's such a good game, and this new, the new changes are going to sound like they're going to make it even better. I hope so. Yeah, uh, because we, you know, we play tested this with many players that love the game and plays played like thousands of games of the old game. And uh, I hope that if these players will like the new version, then uh, most of players will like it. Yeah, uh, because this is the only game I did with Target Group in my mind. I usually do just what I like. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I hope that there will be enough people liking it too. Yeah, with a similar taste. Uh, and if they don't, I had fun creating it, so that's good too. But with this game, I knew there are people that like it and play it, and I, I want to do it uh, right for these people mostly. Of course, it will be good for new people and so on, but, but these are what was my mind focus uh, this time, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that um, everyone is going to enjoy it. At least I know I will enjoy it from what you described. I'm looking forward to playing it when we get back to America. And um, do you have anything else in the works that you've been working on? Sorry? Any new games that you're working on now? 
There's nothing I can say at this moment. Not because I don't want to. Maybe I would not want to, but <laughs> but that is not the point. But I really don't know. If you would ask me last year, I would I would have no idea. Uh, I will have code names here because it was this idea came later. Yeah, and uh, I am several games uh, I am toying with, and I never know which one makes it sooner or later. Yes. When it is ready, it is ready. Maybe most of them will be never ready to be. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, sorry, no. <laughs> well, we will see when it when when it will be. You know. Well, we, we hope eventually it's ready because you're such a great designer and we'd love to get more games from you out there. So the more you make, the better it makes all the fans. And um, we really appreciate it. Everyone, if you're looking for code names, the Meets with the Ages, they're all available now. Great, great, great games, both of them. And um, again, we're here with Lada Cabano. Yeah. And um, this is Jason Levine with the Dice Tower. SCSPO 2015 Designer Spotlight. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.